And welcome back. Welcome to this week's Capital Report with uh, Pat McGuigan of CapitalBeatOK.com. Pat, good morning to you. Good morning. Let's talk this morning about uh, the ACT. Uh, this week, a lot of talk about that, uh, the test results um, for Oklahoma. What, tell, tell us what the, those test results show. What do they say? Well, bottom line, we're below uh, the national average, uh, with one notable exception. Um, in the region, we're at the average. Uh, translating that, we come in, our graduating seniors come in below Kansas and Missouri. We're comparable to Colorado and Texas and we're beating Arkansas, New Mexico, and Louisiana. The composite score, to get specific, was 20.7 versus the national average of 21.1. Um, English, we were right at just, just a nudge below mm -hmm. the national average. Reading was notable because we were at the national average, 52% uh, of our students uh, reaching the threshold of what you need to be successful in college in terms of reading. Then we get to math and science. Yeah. Math and science, very uh, distressing numbers. 19.9 versus the national average of 21.2. I could go on. These numbers get a little bit archaic, but the bottom line is math and science, especially science, far below where we need to be as a state in terms of predicting college success. Now, the nation as a whole, only about one quarter to one third of students, depending on how you look at the numbers, reach the benchmarks needed for college success. So what's been the reaction of the education community to these numbers? It's been very interesting. There's not as much uh, argumentation as you might expect. Um, concern, uh, let's start with Superintendent Janet Barisi. She stressed in our interview that you have to have rigor. And that means in those core areas, four years. You get to have four mm -hmm. years of instruction and they can't be uh, substitute classes. They've got to be real classes that get rigorous. Could go on, because, but the, the information documents uh, a direct relationship between taking four years of the hard classes and then being ready. It's not surprising, yeah. and yet there it is in the documentation. Carl Springer uh, talked about the fact that the city schools, uns unsurprisingly, the city, uh, Oklahoma City, are below uh, the state average. Mm -hmm but things they're trying to do with end of instruction tests and other means to raise the bar. Ed Allen, the local union president in Oklahoma City, advocated for front end training for teachers, doing a better job of mentoring young teachers. Ginger Tenney, the professional Oklahoma educators, seemed pretty distressed that we're below Kansas because uh, mm -hmm. she thinks we can match Kansas. We are beating Texas for the most part. Uh, she advocated respect for teachers. Uh, didn't do a lot of argumentation about money. She said that respect for the profession would help to fill in some of these gaps. Finally, Joel Kinsel at OCPA, uh, vice president there, uh, said that the information seems to indicate that we're not going to be able to get there just by spending more money. And I have mm -hmm. to say, I think he's probably right on that. Money is not the whole answer. So do you see any policy or legislative changes coming out of this? Um, they, there really wasn't a lot of talk about changing law among that cluster of five people I got to. We'll see if anybody else recommends that. Here's my bright idea, I hope, for the month. A lot of states use the ACT as part of the graduation matrix. Now, that would lower our numbers, but we already have 76% of our kids participating in the ACT. And frankly, it's not only a good predictor of college success, but also a good predictor of career success. All right, let's uh, switch topics and briefly discuss uh, presidential politics. We're now kind of officially into uh, primary season for the Republicans, and there was a poll this week in Oklahoma. Uh, talk about what that showed. Yeah, it's the CHS poll. Uh, very interesting uh, results. Uh, Perry is leading the field, uh, but only narrowly, followed by uh, former Massachusetts Governor uh, Mitt Romney, Perry being Rick Perry, the governor of Texas. And this poll was taken even before the um, uh, his formal entry into the race. Michelle Bachman kind of far back in third and then the rest of the field down from there. Herman Cain actually at the top of the uh, the bottom group. Um, so an interesting poll because Perry wasn't even in the race yet right. shows some affinity between Oklahoma uh, and Texas. Do you have I guess. Any, any predictions of any surprises on the uh, campaign trail? What I always say that's a great question. What I always say on predictions is expect the unexpected. It's way too early.
to know uh, what will happen. I still think there's the potential for a surprise, a surprise element. I wouldn't be surprised to see, for example, whoever the ultimate nominee is, pick someone like a Mitch Daniels of Indiana as a running mate. Now he's indicated he doesn't want to run for president, but he might take the second job. He's probably the nation's most successful governor during the recession. So expect the unexpected and maybe a late entry. All right. You can read more about these and other topics. CapitalBeatOK.com is your place. Pat, thanks so much. Have a good day.